Do you want to upgrade from a PSVR to a Rift S? Let's go through some specs. <laughs> What's going on guys, my name is Kyle and welcome to the game department. Today we are going to look at Sony's PSVR compared to Oculus's Rift S. If you already own a PSVR, is it worth upgrading to a Rift S and is the Rift S even an upgrade? I've had the PSVR for a couple of years and I've only just recently upgraded to the Rift S and there's a couple of reasons why. Now one of the first things that I want to preface is I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments about people saying the Rift S is gonna be discontinued, you don't buy it. Relax. <laughs> I've literally just bought this Rift S like three weeks ago. If it gets discontinued and replaced, so be it. So does my phone. Does that mean that this headset is now useless? Absolutely not. So the reason that I wanted to make this video is I've been using this PSVR for years. And anybody that's used the PSVR for years and never used a Rift S or a Quest or a Vive or anything along those lines and this is all you know, you're gonna feel what I'm trying to say. Now my entire VR experience was based on this. How you use it, what comes with using it, the camera, the touch controllers, all of the cables, everything. I thought that's what VR was. I didn't realize how much better it could be. And if I'm bluntly honest, I didn't really use VR as much as I would hope because the experience sort of let me down. Now relax, I'm not here to bash the PSVR because it did do exactly as advertised. However, it's the first gen tech. Realistically, it did what it was supposed to. You can't expect it to be like living in Ready Player One. Oh, this is early stages. But moving on to the Rift S, the difference is phenomenal. Now when I made the decision to buy the Rift S, I did the Googles, I did the searching on, on the interwebs as everybody does when they buy a new product. And to find a direct comparison between the PSVR and the Rift S that had the information that I wanted, I, could, I couldn't find, I just couldn't find it. I couldn't find that information online. So I've thought, I've used this for years. I have spent more time using this in the last three weeks than is probably recommended. So I feel like I'm in a good position right now to talk about the differences and what to expect when jumping into a better headset. So before we start ripping through numbers, I wanted to quickly show you something and explain why going from a PSVR to something like the Rift S is already a better decision. All right, so let's go to the Rift S first. When you get the Rift S, these are the things that comes in the box for the Rift S. You have your headset, very self-explanatory, I know. You get two touch controllers, this one and this one. We're all on the same page so far. And then you get a cable. Now this cable has a DisplayPort connector as well as a USB connector, comes off the same cable, and then this part goes into the headset. This should be connected when you get your headset, but if not, it goes in the front cover. It's very, very easy. But this is, uh, this is it. That's the, that's Rift S. That's it. Let me show you what you get with the PlayStation VR. So with the PS VR, you get obviously your headset. Now the cable is attached to the headset. You can't remove it. Not that big of a deal. It wraps up quite nicely underneath the headset. That's fine. Now, you also have some PlayStation Move controllers. Now, unfortunately, these aren't part of the PlayStation set. You have to buy them separately. Not that big of a deal. And, and now we start going into some, some stranger territory. You also get your PlayStation VR connection box. We're, we're okay, that's fine. Um, you get a two-part power connector with power brick to power the box. No, still not that big of a deal. You also get a small HDMI cable to connect the box to your PS4. You also get a PlayStation camera so the PlayStation can see all the lights that comes with the tracking. You also get a USB to connect the box to your PlayStation. And you'll also get a PlayStation camera mount to mount it to the top of your TV. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that this seems a bit overwhelming. Um, it's, because it, it's, because, it's because it is. It is overwhelming. Now, I don't know about you, but all of this is, is kind of annoying to set up if it's not always set up in your living room. I understand if you plug it in once, it's fine. That's not our situation. We have to unplug and plug everything in every time we want to use it. It's very annoying. So if we look at them side by side, this is the PSVR and this is the Rift S. The PSVR, uh, Rift S. I think you and I both know which ones we would rather set up. One eternity later. Now that I've had my rant about the setup, let's talk about some specs. One of the first things that I want to talk about 
is resolution. So for the sake of the conversation, we are gonna be talking about per eye resolution. If you need more in-depth information of what that actually means, I'll leave a link in the description. You should check it out. It'll explain it in much better terms than I possibly could. So the per eye resolution of the PSVR is 1080 by 960. So looking at that straight to the Rift S, it jumps up to a 2160 by 1200 pixels per eye resolution, which might not seem like a massive difference between the two, but I guarantee you, it is. You find out almost immediately that the difference between this resolution and this resolution means blurry to clear, realistically. The amount of times that I would use this headset and I'd spend half an hour on Google, how do I make PSVR not blurry or changing IPD settings or just changing as much as I possibly could to try and tweak this to look clearer. And the minute I put this on, I realized that it's just the difference between technology. This is newer tech. This is older tech, and the difference is night and day. So stepping into the refresh rates, the PSVR is actually better than the Rift S in the sense of a refresh rate where it caps itself at 120 hertz. The Rift S will cap itself at 90 hertz. Is that a noticeable difference? Not really. Even though this refreshes faster, I couldn't see the picture clear enough for it to be noticeable. I can see this better. Doesn't matter about the dropped refresh rate because I can read text. I can see the stuff that I need to see. Whereas this one, you can't. You feel like somebody who needs prescription glasses but just doesn't have them yet. Another difference between the two is gonna be your field of view. So the PSVR's field of view sits at about 100 degrees, whereas the Rift S sits about 110. Not a drastic, drastic difference. All it means is that the Rift S, you're gonna be able to see further in your peripheral vision as you do with the PSVR. The Rift S also does come through at about 47 grams lighter than the PSVR, which means it's not tugging on your face as much. And the difference in tracking between the Rift S and the PSVR is not even a conversation that needs to happen. This is a million times better. And I'll, I'll talk about why. So while explaining the differences on the tracking, I want to talk about the controllers. So these are the PlayStation Move controllers. They're quite comfortable to use. They are rechargeable. You can't remove the battery and replace it with something else like the Rift controllers. And the way that they are tracked is through this little ball on the top will light up. The PlayStation camera will see that light and will track where that light moves in the room. Does that make sense? So when the controller's off, it looks like this. And when the controller's on, it looks like this. I know that it doesn't really look like that much of a difference, but I promise you there is there is a light. So I'm sure you can tell almost immediately that when it's a super, super well lit room or if there's a lot of sunlight coming through, good luck. It, it's gonna really struggle with seeing exactly where it is. And if it's ever obstructed by a couch or your leg or whatever the situation is, it's gone. I'll see you later. It's very irritating. It can sometimes become very, very annoying. But again, first gen tech. The things I do like about these controllers is that they are really, really comfortable to hold in your hands. You've got a center pad button right where your thumb is. The trigger is nicely placed on the back of the controller. It is a really nice controller to use. Obviously the tracking is a bit of a letdown and the fact that you can't remove and replace the battery is very, very annoying. If for whatever reason they're not charged, you can't just remove the battery, put something in and use it straight away. You've got to plug it in, wait for it to charge. It's just a very annoying experience. Especially if you've gone through all the effort of setting up the PSVR headset and all the stuff that goes with it to find out that your controller is dead. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> Moving into the Rift S controllers, I love these. I didn't realize how much better VR controllers were gonna be until I started using something like this. Obviously these aren't like the knuckle trackers or a haptic glove where you can sense every finger, but they do a freaking pretty good job. If you put your thumb just resting on these buttons, it will tell that your thumb is on these buttons. If you use this grip button on the side, it'll say that these three fingers are gripping. Same with the trigger on the back. You can grab things with all three contact points. It's it's nuts. It's nuts in comparison to the PSVR. These controllers are also light, they are smaller, and they just feel really, really nice in your hand. The joysticks are really well placed. Both controllers come with them, and the layout is exactly the same on both controllers, just mirrored. So triggers on the back, joysticks on the outer edges of the controllers, and the buttons in the center. It is a really, really nice experience to use these over these. I'm just saying, it's just my opinion. Now, one of the reasons that I thought that comparing the PSVR to the Rift S was gonna be a fair pair, the PSVR, you need to have a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 to use this headset. You have to have it, it can't be used otherwise. The Rift S needs to have a PC to run it. It's not a standalone headset, you have to have a PC to use it. I think out of entry level headsets, these probably are the best to compare. Price wise, I think I paid the same amount for this 
that I did this two years ago. So the cost is pretty comparable. In my opinion, if I had to spend 400 bucks for this or $600 on this, I would very happily spend an extra $200 to get something that's this much better. Now look, in my opinion, if you own a PSVR and you're looking at getting into some PC VR gaming, or you wanna to upgrade to something that's not you spending $1,000 or above just to get into it, the Rift S, I absolutely suggest. Now in the fears of this being discontinued, I completely understand. Oculus have got a Quest 2. They're also working on a Quest 3. The Quest 2 is a standalone VR headset. It also has the ability to essentially do everything this does with an extra cable. In saying that, if these get discontinued, the chances that the price will drop so they can flush them out may happen. You might get them cheap secondhand because people want to upgrade to the new ones. There's a bunch of different reasons and a bunch of different things that could happen to make these more accessible for a lot more people. And personally, I'm super, super excited. I can't wait for the day that these are so accessible that everyone can have one. It's just, it, the opportunities are endless. The, the possibilities are endless. Now, if you want to see this used in real time and ask some questions, Come check out our Twitch. You knew the Twitch plug was coming. We stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv forward slash the game department. You should 100% check it out. If you liked this video or felt it helpful in some way, please leave a like. Also, subscribe. We post videos every week. You don't want to miss out on them. Uh, they're a hoot. If you want to find us on any other social media pages, like Instagram, you can find us at uh, the game department. Exactly the same as everywhere else, don't be a dummy. If Discord's more your vibe, we have a great bunch of people. We talk about games, we talk about memes, uh, we talk about how useless I am on a daily basis. So if you want a piece of that action, you should 100% join the server. I will leave a link to that in the description. Other than that, I'm gonna leave you to it. I hope you had a good morning. I hope you have a good night. Bye. <laughs>